Good afternoon. Welcome back. It is Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023. We only have two birthdays today, and we do have a few events to go over real quick. <clears throat> so with those events, we'll start in 1982 at Talladega. Darrell Waltrip won this race, but this race was important for two things. Number one, Benny Parsons was the first driver to qualify at over 200 miles per hour for a Cup Series race, driving the Rainier Racing number 28. And a driver made their only start in this race, finishing next to last, completing about 13 or so laps, L.W. Wright. I'm sure you folks have heard a little bit about L.W. Wright. Um, Rick Houston over in the Scene Vault podcast has really unearthed a lot of information after several years of research and actually had an interview. He's got some good interview clips in his archive, so I recommend you go check out his podcast very, very informative, very, very cool. We'll continue on to 1987 at Langley Field Speedway. Mike Alexander Mike Alexander won his first ever Bush Series race, first of two. And this race is adjacent to, obviously, Langley Field there in Maryland. Or Virginia, I'm sorry. <coughs> it's in that Delmarva Peninsula area. It may be Maryland. I'll have to go back and look. Um... I didn't know where it was till I looked it up on Google Maps. Pretty interesting. A lot of military and, and space research type stuff right beside the racetrack. On the state in 1992, uh, Bobby Dowder wins his only Bush Series race as a driver, but he wasn't flagged the winner. Jeff Burton was. And this was at New River Valley Speedway, but that is now known as Motor Mile. So, Bobby Dodder got his only career win. I can't remember what the infraction was for Jeff Burton, but it was the prior to, uh, oh no, it wasn't the last one prior to Denny Hamlin. I guess uh, Mark Martin or Dale Jarrett or somebody got disqualified from a Bush race about 95 or so. But that was Bobby's only win. And then in 1993 at Talladega, Ernie Irvin won the Cup Series race in a wild finish that seen Rusty Wallace tumble across the finish line in sixth place and got a broken wrist and a concussion for his efforts. Now, it was kind of weird with this race. It started raining really late, and instead of NASCAR finishing the race under caution, which was typically a practice they did at this point in time, NASCAR went ahead and, and, and red flagged the race and they to try to give the fans a finish because looking at the radar it was literally just a, a brief passing drizzle so they let the reins go through they dried the track off real quick and they basically had a, a green white checker type finish it was two laps to go when the green flag come out and you know i guess if you want to say that could be the the um genesis of a green white checker finish a planned NASCAR finish, if you will. That could be. Uh, Earnhardt had led a lot of the race, but was running low on gas, and, and actually believe he ran out on the last lap, which is what allowed Irvin to pass him. But go back and watch the last two laps of that race. It's some of the wildest racing you'll ever see. So anyway, two birthdays. Today I do have cards of one and a card of the second one. So born on this date in 1971 is inaugural IRL co-champion Mr. Buzz Calkins. Couldn't believe I had this card. I, I, as I've been sorting, I'd seen the name pop up. Then when I seen the birthday pop up today, I was like, okay, well, now I know where to dig for a... And there you see it, 5271. So we do have a Buzz Calkins card. Don't remember much about him, except the side of his card said, car said Bradley in real big letters on the side. It's like It was like somebody was scolding their kid. Bradley! So... Anyway, on this date in 1985, he's won a couple cup races on his birthday. Two-time cup champion, former Xfinity Series champion, and former Cup Series Rookie of the Year, Mr. Kyle Busch. I really haven't put these in any order other than I tried to put the Kellogg's and the Hendrick stuff before the Gibbs stuff. So you'll see that this is his second year. This is his first year because he's got the Rookie logo right there when he was driving the Kellogg's and CarQuest stuff. <clears throat> now this is just going to be an amalgamation of Gibbs. So we've talked about the last few days, like Elliot Sadler and a couple other the drivers have had birthdays have had a lot of uniforms, but they drove for a lot of different teams. <laughs> 
Oh, what you're going to see upcoming is literally with one team, Joe Gibbs, except maybe his own Xfinity series or truck series teams. So that's, in my opinion, within the same camp. So you have a Snickers, a Combo, Z-Line Designs Furniture. Then what's this? It's like the Indi okay, Indiana Jones M&M's. Couldn't read that without it being on camera. Of course, he had the Monster deal for a little while, and he also had NOS, and then he came up with Rowdy Energy. So there we see a little NOS decal on this blue M&M's. Mikasuki, which is a Seminole Indian tribe down in Florida. The only reason that <clears throat> Mikasuki quit sponsoring cars is they had a new... I don't want to call it a president, but they had a new leader of their nation. And I guess I missed this one, this car quest one. And they decided they were going to go in a different direction with the sponsorship. And even though James Finch and, and I believe Gibbs and a few others had deals with Mikasuki, they were like, we're just, they have a contract with us, but we're not going to fight it because it's really not worth our time. So they just, you know, canceled the contract and moved on. There is Nas Energy Drink when it was prominent with Kyle Busch. Then we have the light blue M&M's paint scheme. Can't forget Skittles. They're all over the place. There's kind of a traditional M&M's and Kyle not happy about something. Interstate Batteries. Norm Miller would be proud. And there's the Rowdy Energy logo that we talked about. Then we have another dark M&M's, the brown M&M's. Now we're going to go to some cars. Like I said, I tried to put the Hendrix stuff up front. This is actually the Bush series. You can see the Bush series and the Rookie of the Year, 2004. And then we have a cup car with the Kellogg's on it. And then I wanted to get one that had the Car Quest. And I thought that was just a weird trade-off with co-sponsors, Kellogg's and Car Quest. And now we get to the Hendrix stuff. So we have the Hazelnut Spread M&M's. The uh, rake, traditional M&M's, I was looking for one with the number 75 on it, but I didn't have one, which was the year that he ran the All-Star Race number 75. Caramel, or as a lot of people here in the Midwest would say caramel, but caramel M&M's. M&M's Mix. Another different M&M's. The throwback to Bobby Hill and Snickers car. And then we're going to end with a patriotic M&M's. So there's so many traditional M&M paint jobs. I didn't want to go through and have like 45 M&M paint jobs. So I figured a couple of the yellow ones would suffice. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Really, really do appreciate it. Hope you all continue to enjoy this series as we have seven more months to go. Looking forward to each and every day finding different cards like the Buzz Calkins card we just showed you. And who knows what other oddball and oddity and special cards and stuff will come across throughout the rest of this year. So thanks again for watching. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, and we will see you tomorrow.